lot of other families have a tall guy with a deep voice and he scares the crap out of them often. And sometimes he claps them and stuff like that. I mean, who's that guy? I'm, I'm kind of glad I don't have that dude around because I just have to ask one person's permission. You know what I mean? So it was yeah. very, it was very weird. I never, I never searched until later. I didn't even really question. I was just like, man, I think for a while, you know, kids are weird when they're young and they're dealing with, I guess, trauma. I think for a while, I, I definitely remember saying he was dead. <laughs> <laughs> in, wow. like, in like pre-primary school, I just didn't know. Uh, my point is, is that you can do this on a, on a boat easily. Uh, I did my last album on this exact laptop that we have. I mean, it's a it's a very high spec laptop, yeah. um, and you can travel. You can do it anywhere. So my my art now, apart from flying in and out for shows, is to record music and write music. And what better place than to do it from on a boat? You know, and I've got a yeah. got a cool house in Cape Town. And if there's a way that I can get them both done it's i'm i'm very seriously considering it so watch the space <laughs> so i just called them up and uh, i was like 16 17 i think 17 i called him up and i said hey yep dad it's me art and he was like oh wow. freaked out <laughs> pay phone he's like oh i can't believe it i was like maybe we should meet and he was like yes definitely we should meet so that was in Joburg, and um it was a little bit easier there was just a lowly old guy sitting at one of the tables and I walked up to him and we both just stood up and just started sobbing uncontrollably. It was no just ways. the most beautiful, mm. natural, easy thing. And we just hugged and sobbed and hugged and sobbed some more and hugged and Jesus. sobbed. And, and it was just beautiful. And um, so we, we started a connection. <laughs> that, um, so, <laughs> so my mom was like pretty ill in hospital and my dad being Afrikaans, he actually spoke pretty good English, but maybe, maybe it developed later. She, she, she swears she told him to go and register me as Art, A-R-T. Oh. And uh, and he and he came back and he was like, "Look, I've registered as ARD." And she's like, "Oh, no ways!" Fuck. <laughs> well, and so. if you listen to to some of the people who've who've lived to past a hundred, a very common thread that you will find <clears throat> when they ask them, "What's your elixir? What's your secret?" They go, "Well, I just didn't associate with negative people." So you should <laughs> Google it. Google it. People who've lived over a hundred, and you will find the common thing is that they don't associate. And that includes family, includes friends. So, and so I did this course. It was a one year intense four hour theory in the morning and then six hour practice at night. It was a proper drum course. And what? it wasn't so hard, it was proper, proper. Very, very tough curriculum, but it taught me everything I know about rhythm in music, which I have later gone on to be super grateful for because it's not, I've never pondered that or I never, I never get confused by rhythm because I know it pretty well. At, at one stage, I would have been able to, Notate the drum kit. If you had thrown it down a flight of stairs, I would have been able to write out what the notes meant <laughs> on paper, you know? Yeah, I started doing a couple of covers. Got a lucky break at the, at the, the Black Stair restaurant that I was working at. Uh, mm-hmm. Literally knew one song and my mates egged me on. They were like, go and play your, go and play your song that you, we've heard that you can play. I was like, no, nah, because the musician had a little break, right? And, and so they said, go and play, go and do it. So I was like, fucking, I went and played. Did the song and I got, I got off stage and the manager was like, you, Wednesday, 200 rand a night, three sets huh. next Wednesday. I was like, wow. Okay, cool. Wow. I, knew one, I knew one song, one song on guitar. So uh, it was um, one of those moments where you don't go, ah, oh, you know, I only know one guitar I play. I just, do, I was like, yes, I am your man. I'll do it. Anyway, he had massive, he had massive belief in me doing that. And that was, that wow. was pretty, those were the original members of just ginger, but they were called tri-funk era at the oh, time. Cool. And we were wow. like, even even with our very moderate maths, we understood that that was not correct with four of us being on stage. You're just you playing around musician. with people, man. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, like, what does this mean? Why are they for them in this Travag era? What are they doing? They are so progressive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we did we did one only one thing worse than being having a, a name mispronounced. We changed a brand in the middle of our heyday. We changed wow. the spelling of our brand because we were scared about how people were introdu- introducing us on stage. So we changed it to J-I-N-J-E-R so there could be no more confusion. But also what happened is that we lost pretty much everyone. No <laughs> ways, the- really? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, well, we always said, we, we always said, we said as long as we're having fun, then we're doing it because the money came and went mainly to the record companies. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, it's really shocking. Anyway, um, did the you really get sort of what I mean? I mean? We can go there in a second, but yeah. Yeah, no, no, it would just go completely shafted from the record companies from day one. So even even our most recent endeavors in America, yeah, it's uh, it's but it's our fault, bro. You got to own your shit. I, I I guess that's one one little thing that I have against not having grown up with a dad because I never had I never had a father figure showing me any business acumen whatsoever. Never. I've had to. 
probably just come to terms with that and, and appreciate that, that, you know, I do, I do have people reaching out to me all the time going, you won't believe what that song got me through. Uh, I've had many, many stories and this, this is not coming off in a boastful way whatsoever. Like people going that have changed the course of their lives. They're, some of them are you know, potentially suicidal. Some of them are going through some heavy stuff and they were like, that song got me through it. I'm like, sure. So I didn't, it took me a long time to realize the importance of that, of, of what I'm actually creating while we're busy looking for the scales of success on other scales. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm not realizing yeah. that I remember him coming to Standard Bank Arena and like literally tapping and it was like seeing, it was like seeing a ghost, you know, except it was my childhood hero, uh, wow. especially in a singer songwriter sense. And I did manage to get him up onto stage while we did Sugar Man. And you can only imagine, yes. the, you know, the rapture of the crowd. So a very big moment in that time and really, really cool. And he ended up having a beautiful, beautiful career, which is well-deserved. It's a progression of lessons that, that you never stop learning. And uh, I think just being willing to appreciate every experience, no matter how daunting or embarrassing or sad or anything, just go, oh, man, this is a teacher. This is a big teacher. What is it? What, what is it for? And if you can adapt and adopt that um, to anything, like anyone that you meet, like you, you can't be offended. You, it's only you can choose to be offended. Mm.